Well, let's cross live to France 24's Ketivan Gorgestani. She is in Washington for us. Uh, Ketivan, walk us through, if you will, what exactly this means uh, when it comes to carrying arms. Well, uh, this uh, ruling by the Supreme Court uh, simply uh, says that the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms, uh, actually applies and guarantees the right of Americans to uh, carry uh, guns uh, outside in a public. You have to go back to 2008. This was the last time the Supreme Court uh, gave out a major ruling on uh, the issue of uh, guns. And back in 2008, they had decided uh, that the Second Amendment uh, did apply, but it applied only in the privacy of a person's home. So anyone had the right to keep arms in their homes for self-defense. Uh, what happened with this New York law, which, by the way, had been on the books for about a century, so it's not new at all. It was a law that had been on the books for a long, long time, but it was a challenge because uh, gun uh, rights activists knew that there was a shift in uh, the Supreme Court, in uh, the conservativeness of uh, the Supreme Court, and we saw the decision 6 to 3. And so they challenged the New York uh, law. Basically, uh, the New York law uh, said that uh, people in New York had the right possibly to carry a, a handgun, concealed handgun in public, but they had to ask for a permit and they had to show proper cause, meaning they had to show why they needed to be able to carry that concealed weapon in public, show that they needed that for their self-defense. And uh, the court ruled that that was too restrictive, uh, that New York did not have the right to infringe on the Second Amendment, uh, to restrict uh, regular law-abiding citizens uh, from carrying a weapon, even if it's concealed in public, uh, and they did not have the right to ask to prove that proper uh, cause. And so uh, you're seeing uh, really uh, the uh, Supreme Court expanding on that decision from 2008 and really broadening uh, the uh, importance and uh, the, the ruling of uh, the Second Amendment over all attempts to regulate the access to firearms. I mean, this uh, comes uh, in a complicated uh, context, you might say. Often we see the discussion, the debate, the divisiveness around guns, you know, following a, a, a massacre, following a, a killing. And of course, this time it comes after that tragic incident at an elementary school in Texas. Yes, and uh, the irony of the timing of uh, this decision by the Supreme Court is that Congress Finally, after decades of uh, not really uh, passing any uh, gun uh, legislation, is on the verge of actually passing a bipartisan gun control legislation, something uh, that could be uh, the most meaningful uh, legislation we've seen since the early 90s in the United States. But at the same time, you have this ruling from the Supreme Court that is arriving maybe just a few hours before a possible vote in the Senate on that gun legislation. And it really uh, goes against everything that uh, Republicans and Democrats together are trying to do in a Congress, because uh, the broader meaning of uh, this ruling by the Supreme Court is uh, that uh, basically there will be a possibility for gun rights activists to challenge all sorts of laws trying to restrict in one way or another uh, Americans' right to access a gun, whether it's age, whether it's restrictions on how you can carry it, where you can carry it, what type of gun you can carry. And those are some of the measures uh, that are in this bipartisan uh, legislation. And so uh, the question now is, how much the Second Amendment ruling by the Supreme Court will influence uh, gun rights activists to go and challenge more laws. There are seven other states that have laws similar to the New York one, and that could be what we're seeing in the future. All right, Kedavan Gorgistani, uh, with more on this story from Washington. Thank you.